destroyed everything. All right, guys, we're back in CSS. Let's do properties. Jumping right in. Just like, let me open my drink. So introducing the box model. I think I'm gonna learn a shit ton in here and I hope you guys do as well. The CSX box model is pretty important to understand. You can see it in the debugger as well. If you're inspecting an element, let's see if we I can show you what you're gonna do when you're actually. So let's go ahead and select something. And you know what? Uh, there's a whole lot going on in here. So if you see right here, so you see the box model, this orange is basically the uh, margin, then you have the padding, and then you have the content itself. Uh, if we use the, like, yeah, enough of that. But uh, that's basically the gist of it. You have a top part, left part, right part, and bottom part. Oh shit, I'm guessing it goes, uh, let's, let's, let me go back real quick. So it goes top, right, bottom, left, okay. There we go. Understanding the box model. Um, let's use to calculate the width and the height. All right. According to the box model, every element on the web page is a box. Okay. That makes sense, I guess. So you'll see we have a width, then we have the padding on the right, which is a box around it. Then you have the margin around the padding, and so on and so forth. So the background color of content also color covers the padding and margins. I believe it might just be padding. Yeah, all right, I think I messed up there. There we go. It's just the padding. Uh, the height, total height of an element counts the height of that plus the padding plus the margin. Enter the total width of an element in pixels. If the width is 150 pixels, the left and right is padding is 5 each, so that's 5 on each side. The border width is 2, so that's 4. The right margins are 5 as well. Alright, so we have 10, 10, plus 4, 24. I believe this should be 174. There we go. The border property. So you can set borders around things exactly like they did here. This one's five pixels. It's a solid border. There's also like dash borders and dotted borders. And then the color of the border is green as well. Describe uh, the three properties are uh, size, color, and style. So you can also just uh, set one property of it as, uh, as well, such as border style is solid, border width is two pixels. Uh, so you don't need to set them all with the border thing. You probably normally would though um, Fill in the blank to set the border style. So we have border dash style and then our colon Cool So as we were talking about different styles of borders you can see right here. There's a bunch of ones already built in Fill in the blanks, set the border style to an element. Uh, so border style, solid, border width is five pixels, and border color is uh, whatever that comes out to. Nice. So you also have uh, height and width, which you can imagine is exactly what you think it is. It's height, the height and the width. So we want to set the height of the div so that our width is going to be 100 pixels. Our height variable is going to be so, and we're going to set that to 50. Cool. All right, so height and width measurement. So uh, notice how you can do 100% as well, not just pixels. Um, see, 100% goes across the whole width here. Height, width, and height are usually expressed in pixels and percents. Minimum and maximum size. So you can do a minimum width and a minimum height, as well as a minimum maximum height and minimum width as well. So min dash width, and we want to set the min width to 200 px. Cool. You also set the background color or something. Um, doesn't just have to be the body; it can be almost anything. Uh, to do that, it's background. To set the background color. It's background dash color is the name of the property. Uh, you can set it as a hex uh, value. You can set it as RGB value. You can set RGB RGBA, and then light green as well. 
So fill in the blanks, background element with ID, my style. So IDs are hashtags, but my style. And then we're gonna go ahead and set this background dash color to the hex decimal value. Make sure you throw your hashtag in front of that as well. Or if you're old school like me, the pound symbol, but uh, I got told to stop saying that. It made me, it made me date myself. Uh, <laughs> so uh, background dash image URL. So you can set a uh, background image URL like this. So the way that works is it's a URL, parentheses, then quotations, then the URL where it is, the location where it is. And we also have background image. Let's see here, padding, background image, color white. So you can do a bunch, you can combine stuff as well. This paragraph has background image. So you can assi assign a background image to the paragraph. So the body, uh, we're gonna have an opening tag and closing tag. And then again, we have to set the URL uh, like so. Good to go. Now background dash repeat. So, so maybe sometimes you have like a tiled background or an image that you wanna repeat quite a bit. You don't usually see too much of this anymore. This is like a good like 2000, 1995 thing that, that would happen where they'd repeat backgrounds. Every once in a while, man, you'll, you'll do something like that. So you, it'll repeat Y, which will repeat vertically only. And then there's also repeat X, which will repeat horizontally. And uh, then there's just repeat, I forget uh, the value here. Anyhow, so we want to do a background image. We set the URL. And then we want to do background um, dash repeat. Excuse me, no, background dash. So repeat dash Y, is that right? There we go, yeah, repeat dash Y. Uh, setting the value to inherit. When you set the background repeat property inherit, it'll take the same specified value as the property of the parents element. Basically, it's just going to inherit from elsewhere. So if we want the background to repeat, we're going to inherit that from the parent class, which in this case is the body. The values of background repeat property accepts are repeat, no repeat, repeat y, repeat x. We have to go back and review and inherit right. there we go background attachment now let's let's review this the background attachment property sets whether a background image is fixed or scrolls with the rest of the page that's an awful name for background attachment that thinks like you're going to attach a file uh but what do i know so if it's fixed the image isn't going to move it's always going to be in that absolute position There we go. Whoops. Uh, you know, the background attachment values. You have inherent or scroll. So if you scroll like so, you'll see the image goes above and isn't always there. The background attachment probably allows the inherit, fix, and scroll. There's that. I think by default it's scroll. I could be mistaken though. If you don't set anything, the list style, the list style type property. So list style type will basically let you set the different asterisks. You see the numbers A, B, C, zero, zero, zero. You have the, the squares and so on and so forth. Uh, list style type applies to bullets and numberings of the list. And then the list image and position. So list style image is not something I was aware of. That's pretty cool. I have to remember that where you can actually put these custom list items in there. Uh, list style position specifies the position of the marker box inside or outside. So this is inside. Outside is the default value. Um, which keyword is used to specify the image location? or image location address for the list style image property. So let's go back. I believe it's image style dash position. Wait, which keyword is used to specify the image location address for the list style image property? List style position, is that right? There we go. 
This doesn't look. List style image property. It's inside and outside. I don't know. I don't understand what they're asking here. So let's read over this for a minute. Just marker, the CSS, the result, the cell position outside its default value. Oh shit, I think it's L L I? Is that what it's asking? Which keyword is used to specify the image location address for the list style image property? What am I missing here, gentlemen? So let's see. List style position. All right, let's get a hint here. Oh my God, UL? Is that what it's asking for? You what? Oh my god, URL. Okay, so I get it now. They're trying to they were asking how to set the image for the for the uh, the list style image. Okay. All right. Something just didn't click in my brain there. The list style property square outside none, so you can do something like that. Um, basically you can combine everything that we did before, list style type square, list style position outside, list style image none. Go ahead and set our position, our square, and our image like so. Oops. Styling the tables. So you can also style your tables, border collapse, and border spacing. So you can add some spacing around your tables like so. Border collapse property specifies whether your table borders collapse into a single border or separate as default. If borders are separate, we change spacing. Hmm. Border class, border spacing. There we go. Uh, the caption side property specifies the position of the table caption. We specialize the table caption top. So it looks like the caption is basically just the heading here. Caption position? Caption side. There you go. So depending on where you want to put it. That was probably the bottom, like so. Puts it on the bottom. The empty cells property specifies whether or not to display borders or background on an empty cells in the table. Fossil values are show, the borders of the empty cell are rendered. Hide, the borders of the empty cell are not drawn. So if we hide it and there's nothing there, it doesn't draw it out. Okay, that makes sense. Um, by IEM Firefox, hide it by default. That was IE and Firefox. The table layout property. So the table layout specifies the width of the table columns is calculated. Post values are auto, then fixed. Uh, it's auto by default. So if you do set it fixed and the values exceed it, it's, you're going to have some awful stuff like this happening. Auto is usually the correct way of going about it. The default is auto. Styling the links, um, you can style links if you want to. Uh, for instance, uh, when you hover over a link, it turns red, a hover. There's also uh, you know, basically just a link visited, meaning that they've already visited that link. Active, uh, happens when it's active. So you see the hover right here. What of what type are the link visited, active, and hover selectors? They are a event type, I believe, is what that's going for. All right, let's go back. Let's see here.
following our pseudo selectors. Okay, I didn't realize that was what they were called. So apparently, hover and all that's called pseudo selectors. Cool. So you can also uh, text decorate. For instance, maybe you don't want links to be underlined. Used to be the case um, all the time. I think now, not so much. Remove the borders uh, with image links. I believe it's none. Customizing the mouse cursor. So this is something that you rarely ever see anymore. Uh, kind of interesting that you can do it. So you can uh, you can basically set a different cursor. There's probably quite a few. Uh, the property is cursor. All right. So do that. Property is cursor. So you can see all right here we have default, which is our default one that we're actually using right now. Um, you also have the auto, crosshair, move. So by auto it looks like it's, because most of the time you're just going to be copying text. Resize, pointer, all this good stuff. Which one displays a plus icon? That is, is it move? Oh, crosshair. All right, cool. That seems like a little bit of a odd one to name wise, crosshair. Uh, default value, so basically default value just shows you that you have the arrow that we have. Um, fill in the blanks to make the cursor appear as a pointer on paragraph. So it's cursor, and then we're going to sign pointer like so. Not too shabby. And let's go into the quiz. Add the padding value so that it's 10 pixels on the top. 15 pixels to the bottom, so it goes top right, bottom left, so that's 15, and then five to the right, and there's our 15. How do you make a list of not display bullet points? A style type, well, you know, I believe it's none. There we go. And then fill in the blanks. Background dash repeat is how we set the repeat function. And then tech decoration is underline and then we want our cursor here to be crosshair and finally make the cursor appear as a crosshair on all links on the web page so all links so that'd be our anchor tag and we're gonna set cursor and then we're gonna set it to crosshair cool not too shabby guys um went over a lot of properties a uh, few things i didn't know some terminology things that have kind of little gaps in in the brain uh, but I hope you guys had fun. I hope you enjoyed this. Look forward to our weekly interviews on Friday, Behind the Code, where we talk to developers and tech professionals. Support me on patreon.com slash coding tutorials 360, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching the video. If you're interested in coding boot camp, check out devmountain.com, where housing is included in your price of tuition. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and support me on Patreon. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.